Hello and welcome to this ArtCam Express 2015 demonstration. In this demonstration I'm going to show you how you can work with various types of images within ArtCam Express and how you can open them. If I just open up this folder here you can see that I've got four different images. You can see that I've got this first one, which is just a black and white sort of logo piece of clip art. I have this coloured logo clip art. I have this black and white photograph. And then finally, I have a coloured photograph. And I'm going to show you how you can open these and how you can work with these images. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just close that go back to ArtCam and I'm going to show you how you can first of all import the images into ArtCam. Now the way that you can do that is either by going to Open Model and then find the image that you want to import and select that and select Open. Or alternatively you can just grab the image and just drop that into ArtCam and it will open it up. When you do that, it will ask you to set the model size. So what I'm going to do is change the size of this to, let's say, 300 millimeters. And what you'll notice is that the width also changes. Okay, now that's because it's maintaining the aspect ratio. Now, if you didn't want to do this, the only way that you could really do that is by using the bitmap layer module and this allows you to basically import the image as a layer and what you can do with that is that you can constrain this to the model size so basically you can stretch or you can make the image fit your specific model size okay so you can set the origin to be either any of the four corners or the center and what I'm going to do is just select OK. So there you can see that it's opened up this first image. So the first image is a black and a white logo or clip art. And I'm going to show you how you can really easily create lines around this image or what we call vectorize it and turn all of this into vectors. And it's really easy to do with ArtCam Express. If I just first of all show you the transparency slider which is here if I drop that down you can see that it makes the image transparent now this is quite useful to actually see the vectors so I'm just going to leave that let's say there let's just zoom in here now if you take a look at this you can see that it's quite pixelated and I don't really want the vectors to be following all of this pixelation you'll also notice if I bring up the transparency that even though this is just a black and white image there's lots of different shades of greys in there so lots of different grey pixels and I don't really want that you can see down the bottom I've got all of these black colours if I keep on clicking on the down arrow here you can see all of the greys and the white colours so there are actually 256 colours in this image now, in order for ArtCam to basically trace around this, it needs to have one colour in which it can go around. So, what I need to do is bring this image down, so then I've just got the one colour that ArtCam can trace around. Now, the way that we can do that is to reduce the colours. Now, if I select that, reduce colours, you can see straight away it comes down to 32 colours. Now there's still quite a lot of colours in there. What I can do with this, just because it's a, a black and white image, I can just bring that and just slide it right the way down the, to the bottom. So it's just black and white in the colour palette. So I'm going to select OK. And you can see that this is just a black and a white image. Now I've selected the black here. And if I want to vectorize this, we use what we call the bitmap to vector tool. So if I select that, 
opens up this dialog box and you can see under color reduction that there's actually a reduce colors option there so it's if you're having to use the two tools now i'm going to go into the speckle size in a moment what i'm going to do is just select create vectors and this will give me some really nice vectors that i can machine just straight off so if i close that now let's drop the transparency down let's zoom into the same area okay and you can see that it's given me some nice curvy vectors and it's not following all of the pixelation now i can go into node editing this is basically showing me all of the points for this particular piece so if i go into node editing you can see that there's just a few nodes and it's not giving me all of these little nodes going around so it's going to machine this really nice okay so let's close that and i'm just going to delete this frame that i have around the outside because i don't need that and what i'm going to do is switch to the 3d view and let's take a look at this okay so there you can see all of my vectors that i've created so what i'm going to do is machine this now so you can see that i've not edited the vectors in any way these vectors are just great to be machined straight away so what i'm going to do is just select all of the vectors go to toolpaths and i'm going to create a vbit carving toolpath i'm just going to select a carving tool and i'm going to choose this 32 millimeter 120 degree vbit now if I click here for refresh, this will tell me the maximum depth that this will actually machine to. So I can make sure that this is not going to cut through the material. So you can see that the maximum depth is 7.3 millimeters. So I'm going to set up my material. Let's say that I'm using some material that's 15 millimeters thick. And then select calculate now. And that's created the tool paths for me. So if I close that now, right click, and simulate all of the toolpaths. You can see that that's given me this nice shape. Okay, now if I wanted to change this, what I could do is just delete that simulation. And rather than selecting this circle here, I'll just use the inside and it will give me a different shape. So if I edit that and let's deselect that circle and then calculate again. If I now simulate it, it will give me a different shape. Okay, so you can do some quite cool things just with basic logos and just creating VBIT carvings with them. Okay, what I'm going to do now is just show you how you can basically send this to your machine rather than doing it on every example. I'm just going to show you on this particular example. So if you want to send this to your machine, what you need to do is go to toolpaths and then select save toolpaths okay so this opens up the save toolpaths dialog box now you'll see here on the right hand side the toolpath that i've created and what i'm going to do is to just browse and i'm going to find that folder let's say there and I'm going to give this a name, let's say logo. And where it says machine file format, if I select that drop down, you can see all of the different post processors that are available within ArtCam. Now these are available in all of the versions of ArtCam including ArtCam Express. Now a post processor is basically a converter which converts all of the toolpath information from ArtCam into a language that your machine will understand and it will basically move the machine. This is called G-code or NC code. Okay, so let's use, let's say just a, a normal G-code post processor and select save and then if I open up the folder you can see that I've got this logo file now I can just open that and it will open in a word document it's just basically coordinates and commands telling the machine 
where to actually go and what to do. Okay, so let's just delete that and let's just cancel this. So what I'm going to do now is import a, a coloured logo or piece of clip art and show you how you can deal with that. So if I open up the folder, I've got this Olympic ring logo. So if I drop that into ArtCam, I'm not going to save the changes. And I'm going to change the width, let's say 200 and then select OK. And you can see here that I've got basically five different colors. I've got blue, yellow, black, green and red. But if I take a look at the bottom under the color palette, you can see I've got lots of different shades for the black, for the green, for the blue, for the red, for the yellow. Okay, so I need to do exactly the same thing for this so I can vectorize it. Now if I go to create a bitmap to vector and reduce the colors, you can see that it's brought the colors down to 32. And you can see that I've got basically all of the colors here, but there are lots of different shades. Now if I were to bring that right the way down, you can see that it brings it right the way down to just the two colors. So it's got this green color. Now that would actually work in this instance. I could just create the vectors, but I want to show you how you can create them individually. So if I start bringing color back, you can see three, it brings back this gray color. Four brings back the blue color. Five, six, almost there. We've just got two green colors for these two rings seven and then it comes back to the actual colors that I want so you can see that these are all solid colors here so if I select OK now you can see all of the colors here now there's a gray color here that's not really what I want I don't really want that there so if I just zoom in let's just zoom in on this area here you can see that there are little areas where there is grey and I don't really want that so what I'm going to do is turn all of these grey areas into white and I can do that by selecting the white left clicking that becomes the primary colour and then right clicking on the grey and that becomes the secondary colour now if I click this little icon just above the two colors what this will do it will actually link the two colors together and it will turn all of the gray into white so if I select that you can see that it's basically turned any gray areas into white so if I zoom out you can see all of the gray areas are white okay so what I'm going to do now is let's start vectorizing this so let's choose the green color to start with and I'm going to click create vectors okay let's drop the contrast slider bar down okay now I can see a problem with this straight away and the problem that I have is that if I just bring this back up there are certain areas where there are green pixels which are on the black ring especially here where it's quite large and you can see that it's actually created a vector for that piece there. Now I don't really want that. So what I'm going to do is undo that. And I'm going to play with the speckle size. Now the speckle size is basically a pixel tolerance size. So let's say that I have a color that is two pixels. If this is set to be below two, two pixels, it will create a vector around that area. If it's set above two or more, then it will not create the vector around there. So at the moment, because this is set to two pixels, and this is probably about six or seven pixels, let's say, what it's doing, it's just creating a vector around there and then just rounding it off. So if I undo that, and let's bring the speckle size above whatever, how many pixels are here, let's say 10, and then create vectors you can see that it's not created any vectors around this area okay and it's created 
basically what I want for that green ring that I have there. So let's turn the contrast slider bar back up. So that's the green created. Let's create vectors on the black. Just bring that back to two. To be honest, most of the time, I'd say 99% of the time, the speck or size of two is absolutely fine. So I'm going to create the vectors for that. For the red one, create the vectors. The yellow one, create the vectors. Drop the contrast slider bar down so you can see. And then finally, the blue one, and create the vectors. So if I now switch to the 3D view, you can see all of my rings. Now if you want to see the actual picture in the 3D view, you can just select here to display bitmap and it will show you the bitmap within the 3D view also. Okay, so that's how you work with coloured logos or clip art. Now I'm going to import a black and white photograph. So this has got a lot more detail in here. Okay, so I'm going to use this cat that I have here. Let's just open that up so you can see. Okay, so I've just got this cat image. And I'm going to drag and drop that into ArtCam. I'm just going to keep the default sizes. But importantly, what I'm going to do is where it says height in Z, I'm going to add a figure there. Okay, and then I'm going to set the origin to be zero or in the center. Now with this height of three millimeters in Z, it's basically going to create a relief for me from this image. So if I select OK, you can see that it's just opened up the image. If I go to the 3D view, you can see that it's automatically created a relief for me. Now, basically what it's doing is, if you take a look, the dark areas here are the high spots and the whitest areas or the lightest areas are the low spots. So if you just take a look at the Z height down here, as I hover over the black area, it's zero. As I come inside onto the cat, you can see it changing. You can see that it's getting down to three millimeters around here, two and a half around the eye on the ear, about two and a half. So if I go back to the 3D view, you can see that I've got this cat. Now, if I wanted to, I could change the height of this. Let me just set that back. So let's change the height. Let's say try 25 millimeters select apply and you can see that I'll get some more detail. Now the only problem with this is that if I rotate that around to zoom in you can see that I've got all of these spikes and that's not really ideal. It's not going to give me any good information basically. So what I'm going to do is bring that back down. So let's bring it back down to three millimeters and I'm going to show you a little tip how to get a little bit of detail out of this. So what we can do is basically emboss this and it will maintain some detail. So what I'm going to do is when it says detail I'm going to choose emboss and the detail height is going to be 1.5 millimeters. Now basically what this is doing it's just basically creating 1.5 millimeters of detail so it's not got any domes or relief on there, it's just basically creating detail. And the scale height, let's change that to 1.5, so the overall height will be 3 millimeters. So if I now apply this, let me just take a screenshot of this, and then you can see what the difference is going to be in the final piece. So let's just take a screenshot of that, and I'll just leave that there just so you can see that. Okay, so let's select to apply and you can see that this has created some detail. You can see all of the fur is a lot more pronounced. You can also see that we've also got all of this noise around the cat. And I'll show you how to sort that out. So if we close that, what we can do is smooth the relief. So let's just smooth the whole of the relief. Let's do it once 
twice. Let's do it maybe three times, like so. And you can see that I've got a lot more detail. So if I just open up that image that we had, you can see that it's a lot more pronounced. And this is going to work a lot better when I try to machine this because what I want to do is do basically create a, a texture or, or machine this using a V-bit tool to create sort of a textured panel. So what I'm going to do is go to toolpaths and even though I mentioned using a V-bit tool to do this, I'm not going to use the V-bit carving toolpath. I'm going to actually use a 3D toolpath which is the create machine relief. I'm going to do this over the whole relief. Finishing options, I'm going to choose let's say a large 32mm V-bit 120 degrees. And I'm just going to set up the material, let's say 15 millimeters and set the zero at the top. And then calculate now. Let's just see what it looks like with the default values. Okay, so if I simulate this, you can see that I've got the image there and it looks quite cool. Okay, the further away that you look, the better that it looks. I'm just going to try and make this look a little bit better. Uh, one thing that you can do is change the angle. So let's change the angle to be 45. Calculate it again. Let's reset the simulation and simulate again. So this is machining at 45 degrees. Now what you need to do with this to get a good image is to play with the step over. So this looks quite nice, but the step over is probably a little bit too close together. Okay, you can still see the image and it looks quite cool. But the step over is probably a little bit tight. So let's change that. Let's make it, let's try 12 millimeters and calculate that. Okay, and I'm going to reset that and simulate that also. Okay, so that looks a lot better. So you can see a lot more detail. So what you need to do when you're doing these V carvings is to basically play around with the step over and it will give you quite a nice finish. And you can see there that it's given me quite a lot of the detail. Okay, so let's close that. That looks quite nice. Another thing that you can do is basically do this to vectors. So if you want to have areas that are machined one way and then another way on another area, you can do that also. So if I wanted to, let's delete this simulation. Let's say for instance, I want to create a rectangle. Let's just snap on the center there. Let's just bring that over the model like so. I'm just going to move that down using the arrow keys. Let's move that to about there. And then let's mirror that over or across the model and copy it. So I've got two sections now. So what I'm going to do is select the left hand section. Let's edit this machine relief. And rather than machining the whole relief, I'm going to machine selected vectors. And then select calculate now. Okay, and there you can see it's just machined this one side. So what I'm going to do now is another machine relief using exactly the same tool. You could use a different tool if you wanted to. Let's change the step over to be 12. Let's click selected vectors and select the right hand side and the angle I'm going to change that to minus 45 so it's going in the opposite direction to the one on the left and calculate now so I've actually got two machine reliefs now so what I can do is simulate all of these tool paths so you can see it's just doing the left side at 45 degrees and then it will do the right hand side at the opposite. Okay, so there you can see it's doing the right hand side and you can see it's done it differently. So if you wanted to, you can specify areas that you'd want different 
angles on and it would look different so maybe draw a vector around the actual cat and you can have that going one way draw a vector around the background and have that going another way and it creates some really nice effects okay so let's take a look at a color photograph now and see what we can do with that now these are probably the hardest ones to actually use so let's bring in this butterfly that I have here and I'm just going to keep the default width and height let's change the height in Z let's bring it in at five millimeters okay so if I go to the 3d view you can see it's created this relief for me okay much the same as the black and white photograph that I created so what you can do with this is smooth the relief to get rid of some of the noise so maybe let's do that a couple of times you can see that it's got rid of a lot of the noise okay and if I wanted to machine this another way what I can do is just go to toolpaths do a machine relief again but this time I'm going to use a ball nose tool let's just change the step over so we're not waiting around for, for ages change the material thickness let's say 15 millimeters and calculate now so this is basically just going to machine this relief okay I'm not going to do anything fancy like the using the v-bit it's just going to machine what's on the screen so if I just close that and simulate that you see that it's just going to give a one to one lightness of what was actually on the screen the relief okay so that's machined the relief you can see it's basically just copied what the relief looked like and I've just machined that using a small ball nose tool okay let's take a look at the 2d view let's see how we can actually vectorize this well unfortunately we can't use the bitmap to vector tool and the reason for that is because this image just has too many colors if I try to use it and reduce the colors you can see I've reduced the colors down to 32 I've lost a lot of detail if I start bringing that down you can see I'm losing a lot of detail let's just bring it straight down to 2 now as I said before ArtCam needs to basically trace around one colour that you specify so with a coloured photograph there are so many colours in there that when condensed down ArtCam will just basically trace around an area and because it's being condensed down it won't have any detail so if I se select OK and then choose the primary colour which is this dark colour create vectors you can see it has created the vectors and sometimes this does work but if I just drop the contrast slider bar down you can see I've got all these vectors and it's not really what I want now the fastest and easiest way to do this with coloured photographs is to either use this as a starting point if you can get it down to so many colours where you can actually vectorize it and create sort of an outline let's just delete those and let's just undo that now what you would normally do is to basically trace around this manually so if I drop the contrast slider bar down what I can do is just go around this and you'll find that you can do this really really quick once you get the hang of using the polyline tool so you can see just using this polyline tool and then just going round like so and then once you've got to the end you can then just close that off let's just drop the contrast slider bar down 
And you can see that I've created a polyline for that. You just do the opposite on the other side, any parts that you want to do. And that's another way that you can basically vectorize the image. So that's how you work with various images within ArtCam. I hope you found it useful and learned some things from this demonstration. Hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.